Our sun follows a very regular 11-year cycle in which the sun periodically flips its poles and increases its radiation intensity. The last solar maximum occurred in 2001, making the following maximum the year 2012. This date is in direct agreement with the so-called solar Mayan calendar and courtesies, still one of the most accurate calendars on Earth, which predicts that 2012 would mark a change in the sun's quality, resulting from a much larger cycle where our sun would transition from the fifth sun to the sixth sun. Haramain believes that these ancient traditions may have been tracking the larger cycles of the position of our solar system relative to the galactic disk. Our sun is located approximately 26,000 light years from the galactic center and orbits our galactic disk approximately once every 250 million years. However, our sun rotates along the galactic arm in a periodicity of approximately 60 million years, whereby the sun crosses the equator of our galactic disk once every 30 million years. So when we look at the dynamic of our galaxy, and, you know, based on the equations we wrote with uh, Einstein field equations with a torque term in it, the manifold of our galaxy is no longer in terms of geometry of space-time. It's no longer a sphere, but it's actually a double torus structure with vortices, which are visible. We know there's a huge vortex coming out the center of our galaxy. Uh, at the North Pole, we've been able to measure it, um, the North Pole of the galaxy, uh, if we want to call it that way. And uh, it's a large vortex, 3,000 light years long. And we know that the galaxy looks like a disk. And so those are the dynamics of the double torus, you know, with a torus on top and a torus on the bottom, like a sphere with two vortices and an equatorial disk. Our solar system is in an arm coming out of the huge black hole in the center of our galaxy. And that arm is rotating away from the center and our, our, our solar system is stuck in that galactic arm, is rotating in that galactic arm and it passes back and forth across the galactic equator where the space-time manifold flattens and where you would get the maximum amount of radiation, galactic cosmic rays, which are particles that are accelerated throughout the galaxy and that are hitting matter as they go along and creating gamma rays and all sorts of dynamics. Now, when we passed that equator, I realized that that may be where the ancient Mayans and the solar calendar and all this was describing that there was going to be an energy increase, an energy event in our solar system resulting from our relationship to the galactic center. Uh, which they talked about a lot and and that when we cross the galactic equator we would uh, get bombarded with more galactic uh, cosmic rays that would activate the plasma dynamic of our sun and that the sun may go through a, a larger cycle in which in that moment it gets hotter and more active than it was in between when we're not going through the galactic equator. The Mayans said that that was going to occur around 2012 and I started to study uh, the solar cycle and I realized that the sun flipped its poles every 11 years and that every 11 years it would get hotter, more active and then cooler and less active in between the 11 year cycle. I realized as well that the last cycle would occur approximately in 2000-2001. Adding 11 years to that matched the solar calendar of the Mayan in which um, you know, the sun would flip this pole and get active again in 2012. 
However, I deduce from the research, from my understanding of the mechanics of the physics and astrophysics of our sun, from my equations describing the plasma dynamics on the surface of the sun, my balance equation that describe a relationship between the gravitational side of our sun uh, dynamics and the electromagnetic side of our sun, that all these components put together would make this specific 11-year cycle between 2001 and 2012 most likely a much more active and a much more dynamic cycle than anything we've seen before since we've been recording since approximately Galileo. Recently, scientific papers have emerged using simulations based on previous data, which predict that our current solar cycle is going to be 30 to 50 percent more active than the previous cycle. As Haramine notes, when the larger galactic cycle is considered, then our current solar cycle may develop into one of the most active cycles ever recorded. Applying the Haramain Rosher scaling law and his balance equation that relates the gravitational and electromagnetic components, Haramain further theorizes that our own sun's power levels may be driven by a small singularity at its center that he calls a white hole black hole, where hole is W H O L E. In this scenario, the information transfer dynamic across the white hole, black hole boundary event horizon drives the fusion structure of our sun. Haramain points out that these dynamics would produce dark, cooler regions that we call sunspots, which are actual vortices of material and electromagnetic radiation being sucked in towards the centering singularity, resulting in an elongation of the electromagnetic waveforms, generating high X-ray emissions in those regions, just as one would expect from material falling into the event horizon of a black hole. In this recent footage of the sun's outer limb return from the Japanese space telescope called Hinori, astronomers were startled at what they saw, where they expected to see large prominence of plasma ejections blowing into space. They were startled to find these ejections crashing down onto the sun's surface as if they were collapsing from exhaustion and being sucked into the sun and reabsorbed. Leading astrophysicist Dr. Leon Golub of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics described these dynamics as impossible in the context of our current understanding of the sun's physics. However, Haramain's model predicts, as clearly seen in this footage, that a portion of the plasma ejections from the sun would be absorbed by the large, voticular sunspot activity produced by the centering singularity of our sun. Furthermore, as the sunspot activity increases, so do the radiation levels. Therefore, an increase in sunspot activity would result in an increase in radiation in the whole of our solar system. Since the sun is 99.8% of the mass of our solar system, even a few degrees change in our sun's radio heat would have large consequences in the overall temperature of the Earth and its weather patterns. Haramain notes as well that the increase in solar flare strength that has been observed in the past few years, such as the record-breaking solar flare of November 2003, projects highly ionized plasma particles into our solar system, which eventually get caught in the magnetic lines of our Earth and are transported to the pole's geomagnetic vortices thereby heating up the atmosphere and the ice caps, resulting in the accelerated meltdown of the ice sheets. The increase in atmospheric temperature is further compounded by the greenhouse effect, where pollutants trap the heat as in an immense blanket inside the atmosphere. New data from the NASA experts resulting from satellite photography shows that the Greenland ice sheets are melting two times faster than previously expected. And new estimates predict that there may be a significant increase in sea levels over the next 10 to 100 years. 
And since many of the largest cities in the world are at sea level, such a change would have a dramatic effect on our society as a whole. The fresh water being dumped into our oceans will have large impacts on our climates and already the Gulf Stream current has been reported to have slowed down by 30%, the effects of which are only now beginning to be seen with increased hurricane activity, storms, and temperature extremes. These changes, interestingly, have been predicted by many ancient civilizations throughout the ages, talking about this moment in history as a moment in which we were going to encounter large changes on our planet and that it was going to be a precursor to a change in mentality, a change in society, a change in technology that would be forced out of this uh, large, somewhat cataclysmically change, cataclysmic change on our planet. Some of that technology is emerging now and I'm very excited about, uh, about it. We may find ourselves living in a completely different society very shortly. Uh, I mean, in, in, within the next 15 years, we might start to see technologies that allow us to beat the gravitational field and levitate things, uh, move off the surface of our planet, uh, and really give the Earth back to the Earth, allowing the Earth to become the garden again, and us living in a completely different relationship.